Let's talk about the 20 ideas. Okay. We're going to try to run through these super quick. This one used to be my go-to. Number one was a tailgate themed. I don't even like football, but it just kind of <laughs> lent itself to that. So we would have everyone wear their favorite jersey. Yeah. Um, and inevitably you have kids like, I don't have a jersey. And I'm like, okay, just wear your favorite team color. I don't know. And then... <laughs> or put the like black under your yeah. eye or just try to be sporty in right. some kind of way. And we would always play one of my, I mean, for a person who doesn't like football, one of my favorite youth group games is ultimate football. Right. So then you have a barbecue, you have hot dogs going, you know, you kind of make it the football theme. Recently I've loved using the ESPN uh, theme song mm. for when we play flag football or, you know, it just yeah. is like, Ooh, like the tech guys thought of that. I'm like, I like what you did there. So theme it up and you could give a prize at the end to, are you talking about the Monday night football theme song? <sighs> no, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Number two, you guys can do a luau themed party. Same idea, but it would obviously be luau themed. So if you do have it outdoors, Use those little tiki torches and things like that. And just all the little touches that add snow to, cone machine. Yeah. Shave ice. Shave Somehow ice. not said as shave. It's a, duh it's a command. Shave ice. Yeah. Do it now. It's a verb. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. You know, like, maybe you have someone who could give you hula lessons or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That could be super fun. Um, I don't know. What's a Hawaiian game, Jeff? I have no idea, but you can do a hula hoop contest. You'd be surprised how many people can or can't do that. <laughs> um, decades is another fun theme. So you could do 50s, 70s. You skipped 60s. What is 60s though? Surf culture maybe? Because like if you True. say 50s, everyone knows who you're talking about. 70s, 80s, 90s. Everyone, every one of those decades has a theme. But were the 60s, Beatles 60s? They were 50s through in the 60s. And maybe, maybe those two kind of blend together. Okay. 50s, 70s, 80s. Dare I say 90s? How is 90s a theme <laughs> now? But it is. I just feel like it's just, that's my childhood. So whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's so much fun stuff you right. can do there. People are always so excited. I and mean, that can be a do, little bit of an easier one too. It can because you can do, here's where my mind would go. Dance party yeah. with that themed music. Obviously dress up cost like, and then have, I always, anytime we dress up, I always love having a catwalk and people can catwalk. And then we choose like who dressed the best <laughs> right. that night or have people vote. Um, you could do trivia for that, like yeah, pop culture based trivia off of for that the time. 90s. Games that could have been popular during that time too. Right. Or you could do Not Chubby it. Bunny though. That Don't one's never going to be a back no. in style. Deadly Bunny. <laughs> um, you could do scene it, like show a yeah. clip of like a 90s movie and then pause it and then ask a bunch of questions, like a little clip of Mrs. Doubtfire. Was that 90s? I think so. Yeah. And or other 90s shows like power rangers or right. whatever and then ask the questions i think that's a super fun game so lots of ideas there i've seen some youth groups do carnival themed like a circus kind of carnival theme yeah with like carnival games and like you set them up and people can win tickets and tickets translate to candy or prizes or whatever it might be. So, um, and if your leaders are running those like little carnival style games, have them be kind of creepy. You'll really get into character and make yeah. it seem like an actual, carnival. like put bags <laughs> under their eyes, like just a little dark. <laughs> yeah. Have them not shave for a while. <laughs> Maybe not. That's up to you. <laughs> and then you can have all the fun carnival food. Like you could do popcorn yeah. and pretzels and cotton candy, all that kind of stuff. And it's fun. Like you could, make it a small group competition in the sense of like whichever small group earns the most tickets. So you can look up on Pinterest DIY carnival games. Mm. I've done a few and they're fun. They're cheesy, but like, you know, they work. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a good one. This one I've never done, but I'm doing it. We are <laughs> Jeff and I were talking about this morning. The floor is lava obstacle course. Yeah. Our daughters are so into the floor is lava show right now. And I was already thinking like, Oh my gosh, like, I would either have this whole obstacle course and like time people as they go through it. Or if my group was small enough, then I would have them competing at the same time. Whoever finishes it first, yeah. like just throwing like a couch cushion on the floor and then a small rug and then like a wooden pallet two by four and, um, and make it a little a challenging, like where they have multiple like, directions to go that wait, I need to go this way first. 
to like to get, get the something pool and then so bring can, something back. Yeah. yeah. Just to make it a little yeah. more challenging. I know. I'm really and like I feel like I can already see it like theming it like with intense music right. and like Fog red machines. lights, strobes. Yeah, I'm so into this. I can't wait. I'm going to do it. All right. Number six is a glow in the dark event. That could also be like a lock-in. Like we did yeah, a whole episode did, on that's this. That's what I was going to say. We did a whole episode on the Glover Nighter. We'll link it. Yeah. Okay. So you can just check that out. Number seven, a reverse escape room. That is like an escape room, but instead of trying to get out of the room, you're trying to get like into a treasure box yeah. and then like... So you have to figure out certain codes and combinations to eventually get the, the combo lock or whatever to get into a treasure box or something like that. First team that does it wins, but it's something that will last a little while, not like a two minute game or something. Yeah. So those take a little time to write, but they're really fun. Um, photo scavenger hunt. This is one that I've done before where you can, I've done it two ways. Number one, you can do it around your town. And that's what I did when my group was smaller. It was so fun. We live in a town called Fallbrook. So we called it the Fallbrook scavenger hunt. And it was like this whole thing where I would write clues and riddles and things that they'd have to find around our town. Yeah. And then they would get in cars and then get out, take a picture, hurry and get back in whichever team made it back first with the most correct clues. One that was every kid's favorite event. Right. Unfortunately, I'm too big to do it now, but <laughs> man, I would do it in a heartbeat again if we were smaller. If you're too big like me to do it, then you can find things around the church to do that. So, you know, clues about different classrooms or locations or stuff in the church itself. Make them a little cryptic or make it something obscure and harder to find. Not just like take a picture in front of the plant in the right. hallway, you know, but something <laughs> maybe you hid stuff around or whatever. Number nine is a color powder war. We've done a whole episode on how oh, to make yes. an epic color powder war. So make sure you guys check that out. And then number 10 is a tie dye event, which is pretty simple. Again, easier, a little bit easier on the planning, but basically you have the students bring white t-shirts that they want to have tie dyed and you have the station set up and they can kind of do their own design and all that stuff. Rubber bands or something like that. I've never actually done a tie. Yeah. Dye. You just need the dye, which is pretty cheap. Uh, some plastic gloves, buckets. rubber bands and yeah, the buckets of stuff. So we, it can get a little messy. So I would do it outside, but it's a lot, a lot of fun. Slip and slide kickball. So this one you could play at a park in a field on the beach. Um, but you don't want to leave your, that's event, true. You don't so want to leave. You need that grass field. If, if you, you have don't it. have a grass field at your church, I probably wouldn't Strike recommend doing that. this on asphalt, but basically you lay down a giant tarp. You use some tear free soap and mm. some water to make it a little slippery. And then you basically play kickball on it. And yeah. it's super duper fun. If you don't have the giant tarp, you could just, just for each base. Path. Yeah. You could make like a strip of tarp. Oh, it's like the plastic. Yeah, I think it's like the six mil uh, landscaping, whatever. We can link to it. Yeah, you get a like hardware store or whatever. Right. And you could do a strip of that between like first and second, yeah. second and third. And we've whatever. had one that's lasted years. So if you take care of them, it's a, a good investment to make. Number 12 is water wars. We did a whole episode a couple of years ago about socially distanced water games. All of them would still be appropriate. And now you can get closer and you don't have to be six feet apart. So that's always a bonus too. So make sure you guys check that out. But it's basically just an event that's all about water games. So have them bring their swimsuits or any clothes that are willing to get wet. And it's a super fun way to kick off your event. Yeah. Number 13. This is a very big favorite among our church is Nerf Wars. The trick here is you need a lot of Nerf guns. So <laughs> you could either have kids bring their own if kids don't bring their own. Um, this is one that you could put in your pocket and save for next year and right. spend the year trying to collect Nerf and guns. And this is another thing. If you are a smaller group, you're almost and an advantage because you can get Amen. them for your group. You can. If you have 150 kids, you're not buying 150 Nerf you know, guns. But right. if you had 10 kids, that's potentially something that you could afford. So Yeah. And you could like use the whole church right. and like put each up small little group obstacle things or, yeah. or things that they can hide behind, stuff like that. Yeah. It's super duper fun. Um, all right. Number 14, Olympic events. So you could have each small group be a different country and you could do some different summer Olympic events. They don't have to be the official ones. You could come up with your own youth group Olympic. versions of them. Yeah. And again, with the Olympic theme music and someone has to come in with a torch right. and I mean, it doesn't have to be real, but just, you've got to ham all these details up. 
get them like paper flags for their team and all that kind of stuff and compete. You could do all kinds of races right. and you could do a three legged race. You could do a jousting. You could do whatever tons. Um, <laughs> silent disco. Yeah, it's, explain that because I okay, I could be wrong, but here's what I think. No, it is what you think it okay. is. <laughs> he, we were talking about it the other day. I'm like, I have never done it. So pretty much everyone has their own music in their ears. So yeah. AirPods, earbuds, whatever. Or you can get rent the the headphones, things that you use. Okay. And there's like three different channels you can do, and one can be like Disney songs, and one's like '80s music, and one's like worship music, and everyone just like having a little party. And going off of the channel that they like, it, to me, it does not sound like the funnest event. It doesn't. But every time I've heard youth pastors do it, they say their kids love it. So it might be worth a shot. I mean, we have a lot of dance parties. Right. I've never done the silent disco, but could again, be funny. I think if people are listening to different songs and dancing, it's like, wait, what song never are know. you listening never know. to? I mean, junior hires dancing. That's pretty much what it feels like, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> what song are you listening I know. to? Like, what? Okay, I see. Whatever <laughs> you go, you be you. That's all. Okay. It's all good. Uh, number sixteen. I used to love this show. Throwback. American Gladiators. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my this sister is, and I'd watch it all. The this time. is where you have students versus leaders, and this is where your leaders need to go like level ten of over the top hamming it up. Yeah, unitards, <laughs> sweatpants. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but what? What? I would. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And it's a great chance to pummel some students. Who wouldn't want that? <laughs> right. I, there's a satisfaction of throwing a dodgeball <laughs> at a kid sometimes. So yeah, you could do like leaders versus students, dodgeball, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. I mean, I guess in a sense it would sort of defeat the purpose they want if a small group is the team. You can still team them up. It's just that they are all their team is going against the gladiators. Your but, gladiators are the leaders. Yeah. And you have your kids break up into different teams. So the red team is going against the gladiators in this event. And then the blue team is going against the gladiators oh, in this event. Okay. They're still always in which one everyone did better gets a point or gets to win or whatever it is. Yes. Okay. I love that. I think my leaders would really love that. So a red carpet movie night. So you could get a red carpet. There's places that you can rent those with rope lines. You could ask a few uh, parents or volunteers in your church to act as a paparazzi. We've done that before and it's yeah. really fun. They just come and just yell things. Well, who are you wearing? <laughs> Trevor over here, Trevor, Trevor, <laughs> as kids are arriving. And it's really, really fun. Um, have your step and repeat wall. It can be a, a giant white wall. You can just put your logo on it. You can either have one of these printed or you can just do it really cheap and just put butcher paper and print out little tiny logos and tape them on there. When you take pictures, it looks exactly the same. So. Yeah, it really does. But and just, just going over the top, making it fun, making it a really, all these should basically be making it a memorable event that students are like, that was awesome. I can't wait to come back next week kind of thing. Yeah. And at that event, you could do like the Instagram. -y. So that would basically right. be like each small group submits one video and then we show it that night and then you give awards per category. So best leading actor was Brandon yeah. and I spilled my milk, you know, <laughs> and, um, or the best comedy or the best creativity or the most artistic, whatever it might be. And then you can have the whole small group come up and receive mm -hmm. their award and they can give a speech. That's kind of in lieu of actually watching a, an actual movie. Yeah. It's more fun to watch movies made by the kids. So yeah. that would just be a little bit of an announcement ahead of time. Like, Hey, and let them use small group time to do it. Like, Hey guys, next Tuesday, your small group, when you guys meet for Bible study, you guys got to film a 20 right. second video and then give it to me. And then we'll do it at our Instagram. night. Instagram is theoretically could be a better event for down the road, but if you can make it as part of this event, it'd be super cool and yeah. have like uh bouncers there, like your leaders in all black getting, you know, VIP tickets and things like that. That's something you can send in the mail to your students is a ticket to enter Ooh, that'd be fun. for the movie. Yeah. I love that. Um, number 18 is an outdoor movie night. So kind of winding down the summer, you could do the projector with the screen, bring a blanket and a chair, and you guys could do a whole outdoor fun movie night, have some concessions. Cause we know kids, they love their <laughs> treats. We always talk about, you gotta have treats. If there's no treats, don't even bother. Don't even right. bother. So yeah. Number 19 is a lip sync battle. 
super easy to do because realistically you can actually do this like not only on the fly but that night be like hey pair up with your small group pick one of these you know predetermined songs and figure out how you're going to do your yeah. lip sync and all that stuff. I think we've said that we in have. an episode I don't before. Remember which one it was, it was but... totally spontaneous. We didn't plan to do it. It was one of the funnest nights we ever had. So every <laughs> small group, like you were saying, picked a song, yeah. pre-approved list. They had, we let them all go off to their own area for about 10, 15 minutes. We had this huge random costume bin that was like <laughs> all stuff I'd collected over the years. I mean, thrift store stuff, whatever. They got to go and get a few costumes and then they were up and they had to go on and they hardly had any time to prepare. And they went up and they had to perform in front of everyone. Every small group went and it was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. All right. Number 20, our this favorite, is our favorite. This is pretty cool. This will take a little bit of work and some money, but would definitely be worth it. It is called the giant small group kickoff or giant small group event. However you want to name it. But it's basically every game you play is like the giant version of that. So during free time, you can have like giant Jenga out there. And then during some of your games, you can buy, they sell these in giant inflatable bowling, bowling pins. And there's a bowling ball too. But I say take a skateboard, put a student on it, and they're facing backwards. And you, the other small group kids push them and they can't use their arms to knock pins down, but they can guide it, but they're going backwards. So their kids are telling them which way to go. And you can just determine if you want to give them the actual official two rolls or just the one and however many pins they get knocked down. Um, you can also do, what are some other events? Giant cornhole. Oh yeah. <laughs> so the lumber prices have gone up, but if you have someone willing to donate it, just take the giant, like four by eight, like, sheet of wood cut a giant hole in there and you have two of them and use pillows throwing them as like the cornhole little bean bags it's super i feel like this is watch. all like honey i shrunk the kids or something <laughs> um you had the i mean we couldn't call it beer pong but you'd call yeah, it like the same beer pong idea but yeah it's like you get trash cans and you set them up all in the rows and then have the kids throw like a dodgeball or a playground yeah. ball and try to make it in the and then instead of having to have so many balls that they fill it up just if they get it in a trash can you just flip over that trash can so it can't go in there any anymore but super super fun you got i mean just creative you know like that's the name of the game i feel and like. then like whatever whoever wins like maybe they're accumulating points throughout the night they win giant prizes yeah. so like i thought you know when you go to the store we have a store called five below and they have like a lot of like interesting candy there yeah. but like a giant the giant gummy bears or i saw these giant gummy snakes or giant hershey kisses or i've seen a humongous sugar daddy before <laughs> or kit kat whatever so like you can present that to the small group yeah um but it's just a fun unique theme i've never seen it done except for in my mind and it <laughs> sounds really fun you can also buy one of those gigantic like six foot tall beach balls as long as you have an area that it's not going to get popped by like random vegetation and stuff, or you can get one of those cage balls. They're meant to last, but those What's are a lot a more cage expensive. cage ball? The, you know that summer camp where you use those giant balls and you like, you push them, the teams try and get into their corner and stuff. Oh, They're like called... you're in the ball. No, 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 no. That would be cool too. Like those gigantic, we've had them at summer. I know, camp. but why are you calling them a cage? What do you ball? call them? Just a big giant ball. <laughs> Well, I think they're actually called cage balls. <laughs> you weirdo. Welcome to, <laughs> Welcome to the youth and tonight. What the heck? Best practices for your next fall kickoff event for your youth ministry. But uh, who wouldn't love that? What? How is that any better? What am I trying to say? <laughs>